is Judy from Patterns for Pirates, and I'm going to be sewing up a pair of the They might look really big without the elastic, it's perfectly normal. Okay, I'm going to mark the top in two quarters. So this is my center back, this is my center front. The back is always the one that's going to come up higher. You need the higher rise in the back to go around and up and over the booty. So the back is the taller one. And the front is a shorter one. To find my quarter marks, I'm going to align the front and the back seam. And then I'm going to walk the edges out. And this fold is my quarter point. I'm going to mark it whatever way I want. So if that means a pin or um, a clip or even a little fabric marker or something like that, you can do that on the other side. So now between my clips and pins, okay, now I'm going to show you a trick. Um, often if your measurements are more front to back, so if you or your little one, when you turn to the side, you are very deep, you have a big, I don't want to say big, you have a round booty that goes back. Instead of when you face the front and you go side to side on your hip, here's a little trick. Me and my little ones are very front to back. So what you do is you put a little bit more fabric in the back. You can just take your clip and move it to the front slightly, about an inch. And that will depend on the size you're making, um, how front to back you are, things like that. But all this does is put a little bit more fabric in the back if you need it. If you're very side to side, and when you turn to the side you're kind of flat, this isn't a trick that you would need. Okay, now I'm going to grab my elastic, which I forgot to cut, but shouldn't take me too long. prefer to use a um, knit elastic versus the non-roll elastic, um, especially for the walk the planks because we're not going to use a casing. We're going to stitch it down so we don't really need the non-roll. The knit elastic is softer and stretchier. Um, you can sew on it easier than a non-roll because the non-roll is meant for a casing so it's not really meant to be stitched on. Since we're stitching on um, our elastic in the walk the planks, I recommend this um, knit elastic. So what we're going to do is we're going to butt the ends together, just like this, and I'm going to do a very wide zigzag stitch to connect them. We are going to stitch this elastic onto the pants two times, so this seam will not have much stress on it. So don't worry about that popping open. I'm going to use this as my back center, and I'm going to fold to find the front. Now I'm going to place the center back and the center front together, and now my two folds are my quarter marks. Marked in quarters. Now I'm going to align those marked points to the marked points on my pants. I'm going to put the elastic on the inside of the pants. 
and I'm going to align the top edges of both the elastic and the pants. So on the inside, the wrong side of the pants, and I'm matching my back center seam to my back center seam. I'm going to mark my quartered side points. Since I'm doing a baby size, um, the elastic and the waist are not very big, so I only did quarter. If you're doing a bigger adult size and you feel like you have a long ways between each pin, you can always mark an eight. So you just align your quarter marks, fold to find the eighth along the waistband and the elastic. Okay, as you can see, my elastic is much smaller than my waist. Um, and we are going to stretch to fit. I'm going to use my serger, but you can also use your sewing machine. I like to use a zigzag when I'm using the sewing machine. And we are going to stitch right along the top edge just to attach the two. We are not taking any kind of seam allowance. We are merely attaching the elastic to the waistband along the top edge. This um, stitch will show on the inside. So you might want to think about that when you're picking what stitch you like. You can turn off the knife because you will not be taking any kind of seam allowance. It's up to you. Okay, so I just started out a little bit. Now I'm going to stretch my elastic get you a, a little bit closer. I'm going to stretch my elastic to fit the pants. If you're using a knit like me, you don't want to stretch your fabric as well. It'll stretch out um, your knit fabric, which will make it a little bit wavy and wonky. If you're using a non-stretch, of course, you won't worry about that because you cannot stretch your fabric out. Okay. So you grab at your pin and you stretch just until it meets it. Whenever I'm pulling, I always like to have my other hand on the back of the fabric and put just a little bit of tension on it. You don't want to pull your fabric through ever, but you do want to put just a little bit of tension on it. Help those feed dogs naturally feed it through. Okay, I'm just going to remove my pen and do the same thing. So from here to here, I'm just going to stretch it until it meets the fabric. Since I moved my um, my pins a little bit on my fabric, I do have to stretch a little bit more. I am pulling the elastic more along the back because I moved my pins just slightly, about half an inch for this teeny tiny size. I do about an inch on mine. You will pull more on the back if you do that, and you'll have more gathers on the back than the front. As you can see, slightly gathered on the front and slightly more on the back. Just, again, this trick is only for if you um, are very front to back with your measurements versus side to side on your hip measurement. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my elastic down. Again, you will be able to see that stitch that we just made. And you can put your pin on the inside or the outside. Just depends on where you want to stitch from. So if you want to stitch from the inside, 
put them on the inside. If you want to stitch from the outside, you can put them on the outside. Usually stitch from the inside, but it really doesn't matter, whatever your preference is. Okay, so I did the two um, seam lines, the center front and the center back. Now I'm just going to add a few more along the way. You want to make sure that you are folding down evenly so you don't want it to twist, right? You also want to make sure that when you fold down, your fabric is flush with your elastic. So you don't want to have extra fabric, right? It's kind of hard to show, but um, it's flush right here. I'm using an inch elastic for this toddler size. So it's an inch of fabric here and an inch of fabric here. So right here, I'll do an example of what you do not want to do. So I have the inch elastic, but I have like an inch and a half of fabric right here. So I have extra fabric hanging out. And what, what will happen is if you top stitch like that, you'll have a very puffy waistband and you're, you're not going to be happy with that. So make sure you smooth down that fabric. If you're using knit like me, you don't want to stretch it, but you want it to be um, taut. You don't want any extra fabric. It's important to throw a few pins in because we did stretch the elastic as we attached and when we fold it down we're going to have to stretch it again as we top stitch. If you don't throw pins in it's really hard to keep it even and then your waistband will be um, gathered really unevenly and might be like a little slanted if maybe you pulled it a little more on one side than the other. So take the time. This is a really quick sew. So this is the one step where you kind of want to take a little time and make sure your waistband is stretched nice and evenly as you can see. Those pins, all my, ga all my donuts look straight, right? That's what you want. Okay, now this is also the time if you want to throw a tag in, you can throw a tag in. I actually always like to throw a tag in pants like these because otherwise it can be pretty challenging to um, find the front versus the back. You have to see um, which rises higher, which is hard for a little one or sometimes a dad or anybody. Okay, so even now, I have forgotten which one is the front and the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my inseam, and then I'm going to shake them out, and then it's pretty clear. The front is much tall. I mean, the back is much taller than the front, so I'm going to mark that with my... I just cut a tiny piece of fold-over elastic, Folded it. My mom used to use ribbons all the time. Of course, you might have real size tags. You can use whatever. Okay. I'm going to be using a zigzag stitch just because I'm um, sewing a knit fabric, but if you're doing um, a non stretch fabric, you can use a straight stitch. And you're going to be sewing right along the edge. So you'll be sewing um, right along the same area that you attached. I'm going to try to really. Okay. So here's my needle, and I'm going to be sewing right along the edge. I am going to have to hold it a little bit awkwardly since the camera's right in front, but here's my pins. So I'm going to hold it where my pin is, and I am going to pull the elastic just until there's no gathers. Okay, so you, again, you don't want to overstretch if you're using it like me. If you're using a woven fabric, then you'll only be able to stretch till there's no gathers anyways. 
Um, so here's the pin. I'm going to stretch till there's no gathers. And then I like to take my hand and I just like to make sure there's no extra fabric there. I only want an inch fabric here, an inch here, or however wide your elastic is. For the baby sizes, it's one inch. But you do not want extra fabric bubbling up right here or on the underside. So I like to take my fingers and just smooth it out. Make sure it's nice and taut around the elastic. Again, I like to hold it from behind when I'm stretching it. And I'm just gonna go along that edge. Okay, take my pin out and do it again to my next pin. I'm gonna pull it and I'm going to make sure there's no extra fabric. You might need to take um, smaller, so maybe throw a couple more pins in than I did. Um, if you're new to this method, it can feel like you're a little bit of an octopus trying to make sure it's smooth around the elastic, pulling it, pulling it from behind, but it's a really, really quick method. which is why I like it for pajama pants. I don't really enjoy sewing pajama pants, but they're a necessity, so I find myself sewing them, and I want it to be as quick as possible when I am. I really like to, um, you know, sew up a whole set if my kiddo needs pajamas for spring, summer, whatever. I'll just buckle down sew them up a few steps and get it over with. That's why when I drafted the walk the planks, I did them only two pieces. And it's why I chose this construction method for the waistband. I really like pajama pants to be quick, quick, quick. I knocked the camera a little bit. Again, just making sure it's nice and smooth. You don't want any extra fabric around that waistband. Okay, there's my back tag. Let me set you up here so you can see it. Again, you want all your gathers going straight. That's why we took the time to pin. And it's a flatter waistband. Of course, there is the gathers, but when I pull it straight like this, it's nice and flat. That's why, again, we took the time to make sure it's nice and flat when we're sewing it. That's how the inseam looks. So again, you can see that stitch line. And I'll show you again that little trick that I do for me and my kiddos because we have um, fuller, rounder bottoms. You can see the front, how much it gathers. And if I turn it around, you can see the back just gathers slightly more. So it'll be a little fuller in the back if you are a little fuller in the back. Now all that's left for these is the hem. And if you pressed a memory hem, is really easy to see. You can still see my crease. So even though it's in the round, now if you're woven, you'll need to finish the edge. You can either serge it, zigzag it, or you can fold it up half an inch and then another half an inch to enclose the raw edge. Since these are knit, I can just fold it up. And I would just edge stitch along this edge. And then that's it. Done. I like to pair these with the Jolly Roger because they are also super quick. My little one always already has a couple sets like that. After this, I think she's pretty good for the fall and winter. 
So I hope you guys enjoy the walk the planks for the whole family. They'll make super quick pajamas for everybody. Um, and make sure you post them when you're done. We love seeing it in the group. Thanks, guys.